Hi everyone, it's Tasha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm always in thrift stores looking for high-end style home decor for a lot less than retail. I usually take you to thrift shops with me and we add some DIY touches, but in today's video, I want to share with you my tips for how I went from a styleless, lackluster home just a few years ago to an increasingly stylish one on a thrift budget. Come on and join me and let's talk about how to thrift a cohesive, curated home. Well, hello out there and welcome to a video on thrifting toward a cohesive and elevated home. So first of all, let me just go ahead and say that it is easy to become discouraged when you know your home is outdated or incohesive and you want to improve it, but all the advice you see out there either focuses on, yes, thrifty ideas, but those ideas are very small scale, very specific things that don't make a lot of impact to your home as a whole, or they assume that you have lots of money to throw at overhauling your whole home. Now, obviously, in order to really turn your home into an expensive upscale home, that takes a good deal of money. There's no getting around that. And I don't have any magic. However, sometimes you know that, yes, you would like new floors, new cabinetry, new furniture, but guess what? It's not happening right now because you don't have the budget for it. I get it. And I am not one to advocate for spending beyond your means. So this video is not going to tell you that you need new wood flooring or suggest that you install quartz countertops because I know that that's so frustrating to hear. Instead, I'm going to present humble but doable ideas for updating and elevating your home that you already have that you can do right now or very soon with very little money and ideas and tips that you can keep in mind during your next trip to the thrift store so that you can begin to take small steps to elevating your home even without the big home reno budget. So without further ado, let's get into it. First, let me tell you a little bit about our journey. So until 2021, we were renting various places. And although I had had friends say that they liked the way I decorated, I feel like they were just being kind because I had zero direction or style in my home. I had a hodgepodge of things and no real knowledge or inspiration as to a cohesive style or what that meant. I hadn't done any research of any kind into that sort of thing. So I just had a big muddled collection of style and stuff. And I'm going to include here a few pictures of years ago so that I can prove to you that I started with a definitely less than stellar looking home that is a far cry from how our home looks today. And if you're a regular here on this channel, you know that this is nothing like the style that I curate today. So this video is going to encompass what I did both in mindset and in tangible steps that I took to get from this to this, just working on it a little bit at a time. So my number one tip that you absolutely cannot skip if you're going to improve the look of your home is to hone in on your style and your color palette. I know you've probably heard this before and it might be tempting to kind of skip over it and get to the buying decor side of things, but you must decide on a design style and a major color palette of some sort. And rather than bringing in just anything that strikes your fancy, you must be purposeful. So I was working against that elevated atmosphere in my home that I saw in photos and loved when I didn't have any style and color guidelines for myself. I brought in anything and everything that struck my fancy that was affordable. And so we ended up with a hodgepodge of stuff that just simply did not look good together. We can laugh this off and say, oh, it's eclectic. I'm eclectic. But that does eclecticism a disservice because eclectic is actually a style that takes time and effort and what I was doing and I don't know about you but just speaking for myself was I was just creating a hodgepodge. Now after you have honed in on your style and your color palette that you want to go for in your home then you can move on to truly cleaning organizing and purging the home that you already have. So for me it was a move to a new home where we went from renting to buying that motivated me to do this. As I imagined our new home, I knew I wanted to step it up and looking at inspiration and learning from designers here on YouTube and other websites and blogs, I knew I needed to try to basically start over as much as possible. So to truly clean and organize, I think you also have to purge. After I had decided on my new design style, which I wanted to be transitional, clean, and earthy, I got rid of everything that I knew for sure didn't fit. I sold the things that I could, like two bright colored rugs and curtains that weren't the right size or color, and I donated a lot that was just too tedious or small to bother selling. Some items that were everyday needs, I had to wait to get rid of until I'd found an affordable replacement, so I didn't just chuck out all my furniture or anything like that when we moved. 
but I did get rid of lots of decor items right off the bat. I also purged for the sake of purging so that we didn't have so much stuff in general because I knew I wanted a more clean, minimal, and spacious atmosphere. And once you do truly purge, you can really clean and organize. I think you can't thoroughly do one without the other. Just doing these steps alone helped so much because then I had room to think and breathe and visualize what I wanted without feeling distracted or discouraged or overwhelmed by all my items around me that weren't working and were giving off the wrong vibe. That will zap your energy and keep you from achieving your goal really quickly. I used Pinterest to save inspiration and Canva to create mood boards for each room and try and start to piece together my new goals and ideas. I will link in the description box to a few blog posts that were really helpful for me as I dove into decluttering my home. And also I have a couple of tips that I've rounded up from them that I want to share here. So number one, a tip that I thought was a really good idea was to take a picture of a room or a space before you start to declutter it. And this is very helpful because then you can see your progress. You can always, you know, even if you put in a couple of hours work and you feel overwhelmed, like you're not there yet, you can look back at the picture and be like, oh, it's looking better. I'm gonna keep going. Another tip is to work from one direction to another direction so that you can see your progress more clearly and stay motivated. So just like in this footage, how I was sanding this coffee table the other week that I showed you, and it looks so beautiful with that light colored oak underneath. Um, when I was sanding this, I wasn't just going back and forth all around the whole table because I wouldn't have seen any progress for quite a while because it took so many strokes over a spot to be able to see the white oak underneath. So I did one board at a time and I feel like that kept me motivated because I kept seeing the end result over and over and I kept going towards the end. Another tip is to grab three different baskets or bags when you're sorting and decluttering. One for stuff needing to go somewhere else in your home that's just in the wrong room, one for tossing things that need to go in the trash, and one for donating. Another tip is that once your box or bag is half full or more, move it out of the way a little bit and put an empty one in its place. Because if you're looking at a full box and you're trying to decide if you should keep something or get rid of it, you're going to subconsciously lean towards keeping it just because you see that you're running out of room in your box. So grab yourself a fresh box so that doesn't happen to you. Here are some of the decor and the things that I focused on getting rid of to achieve my new style. Two short curtains. These are curtains that would not fit our new space that I had learned from designers that were too short for my windows. They just didn't work anymore. According to designers, curtains should just barely kiss the floor. So if I couldn't lengthen mine enough by letting out a hem at the bottom or changing them to hanging them by clips, which lengthens them a little, I donated them because I knew they wouldn't work with the higher end transitional style that I envisioned. Rugs that were too small or looking worn out or just not my aesthetic at all, I went ahead and donated those. According to designers, main area rugs should be at least large enough so that the front legs of your furniture can be on the rug rather than the rug sort of floating in the middle of the room. And almost all of mine were too small, plus they weren't the colors that I was looking for in the style change. Decor and colors that just didn't work with my new aesthetic non-essential furniture that didn't fit my style goals anymore, things like little ottomans, stools, side chairs, small tables, etc. Things that we could live without but that weren't fitting my aesthetic, I cleared them out of the way so that I could then kind of visualize the space more as I wanted it. Also things like lamps and shapes, colors, or sizes, or styles that couldn't be made more modern or to fit my space. Same with art that didn't fit my style goals. Every single declutterer or designer who is like styling a shelf or something, they will take everything off the shelf first and then begin the process of putting things back on. The same principle sort of applies here. You have to get as much of the stuff that you know isn't working out of the way, in my opinion, before you can really begin to bring things back in and curate an elevated cohesive home. Number three is going to be put things that aren't helpful to your aesthetic out of sight. So one of the most elevating things I think that you can do for your home, in my opinion, is to focus on hiding any necessary items that yes, you do need to keep, but they are visually kind of like clutter, like packaging or other non-aesthetic items. We all have them. We all have things in packaging, in tubs, containers, bags, this and that. But focusing on getting all of that simply out of everyday sight made a huge difference in my home. 
It's fun to find decor items, and that's a big part of this channel, as you know, but something I've worked hard on that's more important than what you see out in our home is what you don't see out in it, because I've put effort into creating ways for us to hide things. Now, this might sound silly or over the top to you, but what I did that I found helpful was to look around in each room and ask myself, what is in sight here that would not be showing if this were a designer room? Or let's say this room was going to be photographed tomorrow for a magazine, right? There are things that you can just automatically spot where you're like, I don't want that in the picture. So I came up with ways to put those things away or hide them in my everyday life. Anything that was not beautiful or aesthetically pleasing, to a certain extent, I tried to put it away. It's not that you toss things that you need or that you get rid of things to the point where you don't have things that you need around your home that are utilitarian, but things that aren't aesthetically pleasing, maybe just try to put them away inside of something where they're not just out on display. So we kind of classify things that we use and we need as kind of neutral. And I feel like sometimes we look around and we don't even see them, but once you put them out of sight, Anything that isn't actually aesthetically pleasing, you can kind of see and feel the difference in your home. You don't have to go crazy with this. I'm not one of those people that's pouring my milk and orange juice into like different aesthetic containers inside my refrigerator or anything, but I'm just saying maybe take a look around each room and see what things you could hide. This will automatically elevate your home just on that step alone without bringing anything in. And tip number four, when you're trying to overhaul your space and you're shopping primarily at thrift shops, I suggest focusing on finding high impact items first to the extent that it's possible. I say this because if you're like me, it might feel overwhelming to picture a whole space. So when you shop, you kind of might get caught up in these little low pressure knickknacks that aren't very important in the overall scheme because they're low pressure and they don't take a lot of decision making to buy them. But you might find it easier to design down from larger pieces than to style up from those knickknack items. So I looked for high impact and larger decor pieces like lamps. If they weren't the color or the finish I wanted, that was okay because I could easily redo them into a modern kind of rustic style that would fit perfectly with my transitional earthy style. And there's a video linked right here where I'm doing that and there's a couple more that I'll put in the description box. So I also looked for shades while I was there and I would thrift those in the trendier shapes that I was looking for. Another high impact item I looked for to redecorate my home were definitely vases and other vessels because I knew that floral arrangements and even standalone vessels were one of the main things I was seeing in the design photos that I consistently loved. I focused on recreating a version of what my inspiration photos were. Now that sounds easy and obvious, but it begins with really studying designs and designers that you love and keeping on looking at those photos and really analyzing them until you begin to understand the methods behind these designs and you can try to emulate those in your own home. Another high impact item in the earthy transitional style particularly that I saw a lot were these indoor trees and so I made myself a DIY tree or two. This is one of them linked in the video above. This is a crate and barrel dupe that I made. And I budgeted for a couple new rugs. I waited for price drops on Amazon or Wayfair and I also made sure to check for the lowest price on that particular item. And luckily I also ended up finding one or two on Marketplace as well. So even though I don't have my like dream floors yet, rugs in the style and color that go with my style still help over top of my floors to create cohesive rooms and even right over the carpet in our living room. I'd like one cohesive flooring on our whole downstairs level and I'm hoping to have that in the near future, but until then the rugs work really well right over top of the carpet, right over top of the floors that I don't particularly love to help tie things together and give me a nice style while I wait for those dream floors. So there will be a part two of this video coming up that dives deeper into how I thrift shopped and more of the types of items that I looked for and still look for when thrifting that I think are important for a cohesive and curated home and just some more of the tips that I've learned over the past three years. But to me, part one had to include those three starter points about figuring out what style you even want and then purging and organizing and getting as many non-aesthetic items as you can out of your site. I think that these are the most important steps actually to re-envisioning your space before you even start shopping. And by the way, these steps are all free. So whether you even have a budget for shopping yet at all, thrift or otherwise, you can still work on these steps and these alone are gonna make your home look more cohesive before bringing in anything new. 
I say this with love and understanding, but nothing that you can find at the thrift shop, no matter how great of a piece it might be, no matter how beautiful or interesting, is going to look particularly good in your home if you're bringing it into a home that's cluttered, that has no style direction, um, that's just a hodgepodge exactly like mine was. It's just going to kind of get lost instead of accentuated. And I think it's so important to go ahead and lay the groundwork for displaying these pieces that you love so that they can really shine by doing these steps that I described above. And on that note, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. As you know, if you've been to this channel before, usually I'm on a slightly different path. I am taking you to the thrift stores with me, showing you hands-on what I'm getting and then how I'm styling it back at home and that sort of thing. But I've been wanting to do this sort of video for a while as well, so I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button for me and leave me a comment letting me know. And then also hit the subscribe button if you're new here and you would like to see more of these videos in your feed. I hope that you have a fantastic week and I will see you at the next video.